Well, it's a beautiful morning in Southern California. It's gonna be hot today. Anyway, this will be my tour of the outside of our Winnebago view. Um, before I start that though, you know, these, uh, these RVs are sort of like a new pair of jeans. Uh, you can buy the right size, but uh, they don't fit quite right in the beginning. Uh, you have to use them, stretch them, wash them, let them shrink, let them just fit to get right. Well, in this RV, I've made a number of mods to kind of get the fit to be just the way I want it. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, this rig has full body paint and the color of the paint has a big impact on how warm it gets inside. I'll show you here. On the darker gray, uh, we're looking at 148 degrees. The lighter gray is 133. And the white, 119 degrees. One thing that I've really noticed is the uh, front cab over section there. It's a dark color, dark gray, and uh, man, it does get hot up there in that cab over section on the inside. So anyway, nothing I can do about it, but uh, just saying. I'll show you some changes that I've made to our view uh, just to fit our lifestyle a little bit better. We have a six gallon water heater. Yeah, we also got some spiders and stuff. Anyway, this water heater was way too hot for me at 140 degrees. That's enough to burn you. And so I uh, changed it, the thermostat, to 120 degrees. And even that's a little hot, but uh, that's the best I could do. That was an easy change, and it is better. Here is I have a uh, temperature gauge in there for the water tank, so I can tell how hot it is. If it gets around 100, then I can take a shower in summer. In the winter, maybe a little bit warmer. While we're out here, uh, made a number of mods to the refrigerator. Yeah, this one didn't really work that great, uh, but I have a separate video on the refrigerator, so I won't go over into details. But essentially put some fans in it, did some uh, hacking away at a shelf there, and uh, anyway, it's working a lot better now. Uh, yeah, we also uh, upgraded the solar. Uh, it had 100 watts, uh, added another 175 watt panel, and that's been a great addition. Really helps the batteries out a lot. Couple of questions on solar. Man, it's bright out today. What does that current reading really mean on the meter? Bright sunny day, I'm only getting 2.9 amps from the solar. The batteries all have a high voltage. If the batteries are fully charged, you're not gonna get a lot of current going into the batteries from the solar. Let's put a load on it and see if it makes a difference. Okay, I got a heater running now and you can see the uh, current from the solar is starting to slowly go up. Let's put higher wattage. Okay, full power. All right, this is quite a load. Um, shows that we're at 11 volts to the inverter because we got 1500 watts uh, going. And my solar is six and a half uh, amps. Let's see what the batteries say. Yeah, the batteries drop down with that heavy load on it. It's just temporary though. I'm definitely not providing enough solar to run a heater. I wonder what difference it makes if the solar panels are clean or dirty. Let's take a look. I haven't cleaned these solar panels in a while, so they do have a fair amount of dirt on them. It doesn't really take long for these panels to get a little dirt on them, but uh, I'm not sure how much effect it has, but uh, let's clean them off and find out. Okay, that looks better. Let's go down and see what we got. Oh, looking at 7.7 uh, .7 amps. So we picked up uh, almost an extra amp just by cleaning the uh, panels. Next question I have is, how much effect does shading have in the solar panels? Let's check it out. Uh, okay, on the 100 amp panel, I got some cardboard over it, so it's a good piece of shade. And that one's, uh, the 175 watt is still fine, so let's go see how much current we get. We're charging at four and a half amps, so uh, that's a big drop down from the 7.7, .7, so I guess a little bit of shading does have a big impact. Uh, but uh, let me shade the other one too, and we'll see what happens if they're both in the shade. We got some shading on both units now. 
Let's see how that is. That's not so good. We're essentially getting no solar with uh, some shading on each panel. So if one is shaded, the other one is still working. So that's good. Outside storage doors on all these views are a lift up ones. Um, yeah, they go up this high, but even so, it can be a little hard getting in here into your cabinet with the door hitting your head, but otherwise they work. This is where I keep my old grill and little portable table to really put this grill on. And of course we have the inverter in there. A diesel generator is right back here. It's very fuel efficient, but it is a little uh, noisy and uh, smells a little bit too. found uh, when we're using it that we need to keep the uh, window shut. This window and the bedroom window up here, otherwise it, uh, it can pull some fumes in. Of course, the good thing about the diesel generator is it can run a long time, maybe like 60 hours on a full tank of fuel. Uh, and we had a power outage in the house, uh, we turned this on, uh, ran an extension cord back to the house, so we were able to run refrigerator and freezers uh, for uh, I think it was six or eight hours. No, it was like 13 hours that we didn't have power. So uh, it worked great as a backup generator. That's what it sounds like running. A little bit noisy, but uh, supposedly it's not any noisier than the propane generator. Just generators in, in general are loud. Okay, now that we got the generator turned off, I can hear myself think. Uh, anyway, moving back, this is a, a wet compartment right back here. And you can see it's all plastic. So you can keep uh, wet things in here. I keep uh, water shoes and whatnot. And also uh, my thermometer for the outside temperature. But uh, one time we did find that there was some water filled up in here. I don't know if it was from driving in the rain or whatever, but uh, uh, to mitigate that, uh, we drilled a couple of quarter inch holes in the low points on both sides. That allows any water to drain out in case we get any. It's good to put your wet towels and stuff in, otherwise uh, we don't use it for too much. Moving on to the back, we have a one-up bike rack, which I really like. That works really nice. I uh, actually use it on the car and the RV. Uh, just with that uh, screw, you can un you, uh, loosen up the bolt, slide it out, slide it on the car back and forth, so easy peasy. And it uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, match, the color matches really well. As I mentioned in my previous video, uh, I did replace the bathroom vent fan. The one that was in here was uh, very puny and didn't do much other than make noise. So I put in this Max Air, uh, I think it's a 7000 model. The vent itself is very uh, streamlined. It's easy to install. Uh, just it's screwed into the roof actually and i core goes around it to seal it. One of the nice things about it is this remote control. Um, you can set a temperature, so when it gets down below a certain temperature, it'll close, which we do use in the summer. Because sometimes it gets pretty cold, too, in the mountains, uh, even when it's warm out during the day. Just turn it on. Another convenience item is adding a transfer switch. The transfer switch is this box right here, and that way I can run the generator without plugging in the cord, so I don't have to mess with that. It seems like I'm always forgetting whether I had it plugged in or not on the inside, I had to run to the outside. The hardest thing about replacing this box was reaching into the small compartment and uh, doing all the wiring from over here. But uh, anyway, um, you only have to do it once and then you're all set. While we're down here, I'll mention that uh, after this transfer box, this cord goes directly into our EMS unit or a big surge protector. Some people put it into this box, but I really didn't have enough room in here, so I ended up uh, putting it under the bed. So uh, that seems to work fine. And the remote's under there too, so uh, uh, it's working fine. Yeah, I mentioned before about these uh, tilt-up doors for the storage compartments outside. Uh, they leave something to be desired, especially the ones under the slide-out. You can see here, 
uh, it's really hard to reach in and get those. So you want to store stuff that's uh, not used too much. Here I just keep my extra parts, toolbox, and some different uh, sewer fittings that I may or may not use. And the front one. Um, on a long trip I usually carry an extra five gallons of diesel just in case and this is where I also keep the uh, ramps, plastic ramps. These work really nice. Uh, I made some wooden ones uh, but I actually like these plastic ones better. It's all one piece, they're a lot lighter and they're just easy to use, just drive up on them. So as long as I don't have to go up more than about four inches I'm good to go. Well, this concludes the tour of the outside of my Winnebago view. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, this is Grandpa Ron, and I'll see you on the road.